Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name's Dave, and uh, welcoming you to our online stream for the week. Um, as you will be able to see, uh, we are not in our building this week. We are doing things differently. We're doing things from home. Uh, so I'm here at home, and uh, we'll have various people involved in in this morning's stream. So welcome to you. Um, and uh, just to make sure you're aware of a few things about how this is going to work, um, you should be watching this through our website. Um, if you minimize your video, uh, you'll see below there are a few links to things. I'm going to explain what those are in a moment. <coughs> and uh, beneath that, there's a little box where you can uh, write a comment or uh, send a message. And if you do that, then I will actually get an email. So if there's things during this that you want to feedback, that you want to share, that you want to talk about what maybe God is saying to you, then uh, please do that. Uh, and I'll be able to see that and maybe share some of those throughout the course of, uh, of our time together. So a couple of uh, things about those links below. Uh, one is a link to a resource pack, um, a pack of things that are all sort of uh, tying in with what it is that we're looking at and doing together this morning. So there's an opportunity for you to continue to explore, continue to uh, grow and engage with God during the week. Uh, so please do uh, check that out. Uh, things for all ages in there, um, things to discuss, things to do, activities, um, links to various things as well. There's also an opportunity in one of the links below to give. Um, we believe that giving as an, is an important part of what we do. We give in so many different ways. We give with our time, we give with our uh, generosity of heart, we give with uh, so many different things. But one of the things that we believe God calls us to do is to give financially. So if you're part of Gold Hill and uh, maybe you'd be used to giving in the weekly uh, physical uh, donation, there's opportunities to give online. If you're not part of our church and you feel led to give, please uh, pl please do, uh, but no pressure on anyone. Uh, this is not a paid service. And uh, and finally, um, the other the other link down there is just to our our resource hub page. We're putting together all kinds of different things, videos and blogs and uh, resources and links to uh, playlists on YouTube uh, and all kinds of different things over the course of these uh, weeks uh, and months, however long uh, we're in this season we're going to be trying to provide people and uh, provide people with things put people in uh, put things in people's hands to use and to engage with to help grow with god to help navigate these times so please do uh, check that out that's constantly updating great things in there for children as well as for uh, adults so that's sort of uh, some notices explaining what's going on with this uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a video which has been recorded by Stephen, one of my colleagues one of the other leaders at Gold Hill. And he's really asking us the question, how is it that we can best engage with God through this this morning? So uh, he's going to um, ask some questions and then there's a bit of time for you to consider it. Uh, you might want to think about that. If you're with other people, then you can have a conversation. Like I said, the comment box below, the message box below, if you put messages in there, if you've got ideas in response to what Stephen asks, then, uh, then maybe put them in there and I'll be able to gather a few of those together and we can journey in this uh, together. So uh, for now, I'm going to hand over to that video from Stephen. So good morning and welcome to our online service. My name is Stephen. I'm one of the pastors at Gold Hill and I also uh, lead Hope Community Church. Whether you're from Gold Hill or from, from the Hope family and you're joining us online, welcome to you. If you're not from um, Gold Hill or Hope, but you're joining us from other places in the UK or, or locally or even abroad, you're most welcome to join us on this online service. We're living in strange times where even though we're at a distance from one another, we're still able to connect, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm going to kick things off in a moment uh, with a prayer. But before I do, I, I want to ask you a question. What will help you engage with God this morning? We use the internet for a whole load of, of different things. You might use it for gaming, for shopping, for watching things, for listening to things, um, going on social media, a whole range of things. But when we gather as church, whether it's in person or online, we gather to engage with Jesus. We, we gather to engage with, with God. So what's going to help you this morning to engage with him? We're going to have a few moments after I've prayed to just have a think about that. Whether you're by yourself, you can think about that. Maybe write down some stuff that's going to help you. Um, or, or if you're with other people in, in your household, then uh, have a chat. What, what are the things that are going to help you uh, focus in on Jesus and engage with him and his Holy Spirit? I'm going to pray and uh, then, then you're able to think through those things. 
Jesus, thank you for technology. Thank you that even though we're scattered all over the place, uh, you are with us by your Holy Spirit. And because of you, um, we can be one, even though we're in many places. I thank you for those, that verse in Ephesians where it says that there's one Lord, one, one baptism, one faith, one, one hope, one Holy Spirit that, that we're united around. Jesus, thank you that you're with us. And I pray that you'll help us to engage with you. Give us good ideas now as we think through those things uh, that will help us engage with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Do take time to have a think. Okay, well, uh, thank you to Stephen for, for that. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what it is that, that, that you were thinking about or you were talking about if you're with other people that would help you to engage with God this morning. But I, I'd encourage you, whatever it is, um, do it. Uh, so here, here are some things that, that, I was, that I was thinking about. I, uh, well, my Bible, um, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to engage with God through, through the Bible this morning. Uh, and so I've, I've got my Bible with me. I'm not just uh, waiting to, to, to listen to someone else talk about it. I'm, I'm hoping to engage with it myself. I've, uh, I've got a notebook and I've got a pen uh, ready to sort of assume that there is going to be some things that I want to capture, want to, want to get down. Um, here's another thing. I, I, I got dressed this morning. Um, <laughs> I'm aware that I kind of had no choice about that because I am, uh, I'm hosting this. I'm on camera. Um, but, but actually what we choose to do, the way we choose to get ourselves ready, uh, whether we choose to uh, come ready and, uh, and, and actively ready to engage or whether we're just sort of uh, hanging out and sort of half tuning in, half not. Here's some other things we might be able to do to help engage. Perhaps it's actually um, switching off other notifications on our phone or, uh, or choosing to put it down uh, for a little bit so that we're sort of really focusing in on what it is that God wants to say to us. Um, it can be really tempting to just sort of engage with, with, with this online thing, just, just like we would with, uh, with a TV show or with Netflix. We're just, we're just watching it. We're just observing it. But actually, there's, uh, there's an opportunity for us to engage, to participate uh, this morning. There's going to be a few more times uh, where there's opportunity for us to, for us to talk, for us to uh, think and, uh, and, and to sort of engage with stuff. So make sure you're ready for those times. And again, there's an opportunity to um, uh, pop, things into, uh, pop things into that message box if you want to feed some of those things back in. One person has actually sent a message saying, what would help me uh, engage with God this morning? A time of worship. Well, that's what we're going to have now. We're going to have a time of sung worship. Uh, it's been pre-recorded. Uh, so we're going to be having a, a video uh, from Julian, who's one of our regular worship leaders at Gold Hill. And he's going to be leading us in a time of sung worship, which might feel like a strange thing to do from home. It might seem like an odd thing to engage with uh, from, from home because we're used to singing with a, with a crowd of people. But I'd encourage you to remember that God is always the audience of our worship. He's always the, the focus and the, and the object of our worship. Whether we're in a room with 100 people, whether we're in a room by ourselves or with just two or three. So I'd encourage you to engage with this, um, get stuck in. It may be that there are things that you can do to help with that. Maybe in future weeks you want to hook this up to a, to a better sound system so that you can hear things more clearly than just through your uh, phone or your, or your laptop. But whatever it is, I pray that God would meet with us as we go to this time of worship and as we engage with him together. you've done. 
done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King above all kings Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me Let faith arise In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you No matter what I feel, let faith arise Let faith arise for my champion's not dead, he is alive And he already knows my every need Surely he will come and rescue me God of miracles come We need your suit love to break through nothing's impossible you're the god of miracles let faith my eyes Oh, the battle has been won My God is faithful And every single word he said is true God of miracles come We need your
This world is shaking, but you cannot be shaken. My heart is breaking, but I'm not broken yet. Your love is fearless. Help me to be courageous too. Oh, nothing is impossible. This world is shaking, but you cannot be shaken. My heart is breaking, but I'm not broken yet. Your love is fearless. Help me to be courageous too. Oh, nothing is impossible for the God of miracles. Come. We need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. God of miracles, come. We need your supernatural. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible for the God of miracles. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible You're the God of miracles God of All 
my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running out it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing All my life you have been faithful been so so good with every breath that I am able well, I will sing of the goodness of God well, I will sing of the goodness of God Okay, well, I've actually had a couple of messages during that time of people really touched by the particular choices of songs and the words and uh, someone uh, joining in prayer during that time praying. We pray that you would bring the chaos of this world at present back into order. And uh, we do pray that. Uh, we pray that with, 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 with God's might, things would, things would be turned around. Um, so as we've prayed and worshipped, we're now going to turn to God's word. Uh, Stephen, who gave us a little intro at the beginning of this time together, uh, has recorded a message. Uh, during it, there are going to be some some times to pause and to reflect and to think. So I'd really encourage you to uh, grab a Bible, either a physical one or uh, get a Bible up on your uh, on a device somewhere uh, so that you can join in with reading along and then also uh, thinking or discussing, depending on whether you're by yourself or with others. So please do please do get ready and uh, I'm going to pray very briefly and then uh, hand over to Stephen. Lord God we thank you for your word, we thank you for the fact you speak to us, thank you that you are not silent and now as we as we go to this uh, to this message from Stephen, to this uh, leading from Stephen, Lord would you help us all to engage with you and engage with your word uh, in ways that will be uh, helpful and transforming for us and for others. In Jesus name we pray this, Amen. Hand over to Stephen now. I'm so grateful for modern technology and the ability to communicate in different ways. I had the honour on Wednesday, uh, sorry, on Thursday, of um, being on, on a Zoom call with church leaders and network leaders from around the world as we prayed for one another and shared what God was doing um, during this crisis period. Technology is wonderful for communicating at a distance. In uh, the passage that we're looking at today, um, We've got uh, Paul, who had spent a few years going around with his apprentice Timothy. And Paul and Timothy are now separated and are at a distance. They're not in lockdown. We don't know whether Paul was in lockdown when he wrote uh, the first letter to Timothy, whether he was in, in, in prison or not. Um, but they were at a distance. They were separated. And Paul uses technology 
to communicate. The technology though wasn't, um, wasn't a Zoom or a webcam or live streaming, it was pen and paper or most likely a quill and parchment. And uh, as they had journeyed together making disciples and starting churches, uh, Paul communicates so that that work continues. And what, what he does is he puts pen, pen to paper or quill to parchment and encourages Timothy uh, to, to be church and to lead church. Now, the advantage of um, Paul using this form of technology or, or of communicating through writing is that Timothy could have gone over and over and over uh, Paul's letter and we can do the same. We can look at it now, hundreds upon hundreds of years later, we can look at what Paul wrote to Timothy. And as we look through 1 Timothy, we see things that God, I think, wants to speak to us now. Paul wrote to Timothy and in the first uh, section of the letter, he reminds Timothy of the, the wonder and love and grace of God. He reminds him in that first chapter that God's grace has the power to change lives. Paul was a living story of God changing his life. I wonder how many of us need to know that this morning or know it afresh this morning that God changes lives and his grace and his love is powerful and it can change people. He urges Timothy to cling on to truths like that in chapter one. And in this season of fear, of despair, disruption and distraction, we need to cling on to the promises of Jesus so that we can keep going. Paul continues his letter um, moving from a message of grace into a, a kind of key instructions for Timothy to lead the church and to help people be the church in the context that, that they were in. And as we heard last week and we unpacked last week, um, Paul encourages Timothy to pray. He gets people to pray for all different kinds of situations and for all different kinds of people. And we continue to be a praying people at this time. We pray for our leaders. We pray for Boris Johnson um, and, and other members of, of the government, of, um, of the leadership of this, of this nation and around the world. And we pray that they will have wisdom, that they will have strength to lead us during this time. So P Paul's first instruction was to pray. And now today, uh, we're going to look at one of his, his second instructions um, of, of how to, to lead the church. We're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. Um, and it might help for you to follow it in your Bible if you've got one in front of you. If you don't, you can just listen to me or uh, just read it as it'll come on, on the screen as I read it. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Paul writes... I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon. So that if I'm delayed, you'll know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in human body and vindicated by the Spirit he was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. L last week, uh, Dave um, helped us uh, unpack the passage uh, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2 by asking three questions. They're up on the, the whiteboard just behind me. Um, what does the passage say? What do I need to obey? And is this um, something that I can share with people. Rather than me just saying what what's, um, I think the passage says straight off, I want to encourage you, whether you're by yourself or um, within a, a kind of ha household uh, with, with different family members or people within that house, um, to have a look at the passage and see what it says. Maybe you want to think about um, what does it say about God? What does it say about us? Is there a, a promise that we can cling on to from, uh, in the passage? Or is there a truth that we can cling on to? Or um, is there something that I need to do or to be in terms of kind of uh, um, uh, obedience? So what does the passage say? You'll have a few minutes and then I, I'll share my thoughts. I'm sorry you won't be able to share your thoughts immediately, but I would love to hear them. Um, do, do share them via email 
or give us a call or, or arrange a Zoom and share your thoughts then. But for now, have a look at that passage, those three verses, and write down or, or talk about what does the passage say. So what does the passage say? I just want to share some thoughts and I'll write some of them up. Um, first of all, Paul wants to visit uh, Timothy. He wants to be with him. He shares that in verse 14. But then he goes on and says, but in case he can't, in case he's delayed or in case it doesn't happen, he wants to ensure that Timothy knows how to be church and how to lead church. In Paul's absence, he doesn't want Timothy just to um, kind of hold the fort until I, I can be with you, Timothy. To just maintain things until I'm back with you. Me, Paul, the apostle, the big leader, I can sort things out. No, he wants to instruct and equip and, and release Timothy to be church and to lead others in being the church. And um, he, he gives some clear instructions um, or throughout the letter of Timothy. And in these verses, he gives the reason why he's given those instructions. He wants Timothy to be church. So I'm just going to write that up. Um, so it says to be a church. What else does the passage say um, or, or can tell us about? Um, well, it says that God is alive. It says that the church is the household of God or God's household um, and, and it's, it's the church is, is the church of the living God. First of all, just with, with, with that kind of thing, um, God is alive. God is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. He's in this world. We're going to celebrate that in a few weeks time at Easter. But the truth and the fact that Jesus is alive needs to be celebrated every single day and needs to be proclaimed and celebrated even more so today and in the days ahead when there is great fear and hopelessness and despair and um, distraction and disruption. We need to be celebrating that God is alive. Maybe you need to, to, to write down reasons or, or kind of the kind of so what things this week. You can scribble on a piece of paper or make notes on your phone or, or on your computer. God is alive. So what? And then start listing them off. These are some that I wrote down. Um, because Jesus is alive, we can have hope. Because Jesus is alive, we don't need to fear. And it is full of fear, the, the society at the moment. But actually, we don't need to be afraid because the living God is alive and he says that he's with us always because Jesus is alive we can have confidence that death is not the end for his followers his resurrection his coming alive again gives us life and gives us purpose and power because Jesus is alive we can experience God near us amongst us now wherever you are the next thing that I think the passage says is is that we're a household uh, we're family, the, the, um, we are family. Now, I'm not um, talking about the song uh, by uh, S Sister Sledge, but the Greek word there for household is oikos, which means a kind of family unit. The church of God, the, uh, the, the church of the living God, has never ever been about a building, but about a family, a household, an oikos a living unit. Our buildings are closed at the moment, but our family, the church, is definitely not closed. It's open for business, open as usual. And we need to uh, live in, accord in accordance with us being family, not just us being a building. When I was little, I, um, I remember so, so clearly it's probably about six or seven. I was told off by uh, a lady called Miss Eastman. Uh, she, she's gone to glory now. Uh, she was my Sunday school teacher and she told me off for running in church. I remember her words. She said, you need to respect the house of God. And I realise now that she was thinking that church, that God's house was a building rather than a family. What she was saying was true. We need to respect, we need to love, we need to honour 
God's house. But that's family, not building. It's about being a family of Jesus followers. And then the, the, the last thing that I think this passage says is that we're to be about Jesus. Um, verse 15 says that we're to hold him high. I'm just going to write up Jesus. Um, I'm sorry um, if it's not very clear on the screen. Um, we're, we're to be about Jesus. Verse 15 talks about holding him high like a pillar. That The church is meant to be like a pillar, holding up the truth of Jesus, of who he really is. And he's to be our focus that we lift high and the base of our truth, the foundation of who we are. And then verse 16 goes on to, to remind us of the good news of Jesus. Jesus joining us in our mess so we can join him in God's family. So if that's what the Bible passage says, what do we need to obey? It's the kind of, OK, so what now kind of thing. Take some time um, noting some things down, reread the passage and ask God uh, or, or to, to kind of highlight, God's spirit to highlight, what does the passage ask us to do or to be, to obey? Take some time and I'll be back in a moment. What do I need to obey? I just want to share my thoughts, as I said earlier on, um, if you want to share your thoughts, do send an email, arrange a Zoom call with me or with, uh, with others uh, from the church family or from the church that, that you're part of um, and, and say, this is what I think the, the Holy Spirit was asking me to be like or to do this week as a result of reading that passage. And I'm sharing it with you. And um, what do you think? What was God saying to you? Now, the first thing that I, I've got down, uh, similar, what does the passage say? It's be church. Well, actually, I need to be church. Um, Remember, that's not a building, that's a family. I need to be family. And if I'm family, I need to conduct myself as God's family, the family of the living God. We need to be an oikos, a household. And in that household, that we're not um, just an organisation or a business, but we're, we're a group of people that are brought together and united in love and in blood. A, a family unit, a biological family unit are linked together with love and with blood and it's the same with God's family through the blood of Jesus as we turn and believe in him and accept what he did on the cross for us as he shed his blood we're united in his blood we're family and we're united in his love and love for one another and it might be that um, that God is saying be my family and be a forgiving people and this week, are there people that you need to forgive and release in forgiveness and say, I'm not going to hold that grudge anymore because you're family? Are there people that you, that you need to apologise to and say, look, I'm really sorry that I treated you like this? Are there people that you need to, need to ring up and just listen to? Because family, listen, family, forgive, family, um, kind of um, apologise to one another. We say sorry. As family, we're to love one another authentically, real love. We point out the things that irritate us about each other. Maybe not always, but um, we, we, we need to try and know how to do that well as a church family. To actually say, that upset me. And I don't think that that was the Jesus way. And, and, and to know that our love for one another in the blood of Jesus and the love of Jesus, our bond is stronger than our disagreement or our pointing out or challenging of one another. We need to learn to do that well, especially in a time of, of, of challenge. We need to be able to, to say um, encouragements and challenges to one another because that's what family do. Um, my family, my bi biological family and my, my, uh, my family now with Nikki and, and the three children um, and Nikki's family, they are my biggest encouragers. And also, and I say this in, in um, complete love for them my biggest challenges they want the best for me so they want me to they want they challenge me in a good way to be more and more like Jesus we're to be church we're to be family and uh, I said earlier on about um, holding up Jesus as a pillar and a f and being a foundation we as we lift him on high 
um, we're also to, to kind of um, be a base for others to come to know him, that pillar and foundation, um, focusing in on him as our leader, especially in a time where maybe church leaders that we look up to are less visible or less present. We need to look to the, the leader of the church, the leader of the family, the head of the household, Jesus Christ, and look to him and, and for, for leadership, for direction, his spirit. Um, so we need to be listening to the head of the house. So what's Jesus saying to you? And what have you done about it recently? The last question is, um, what, what can I share? Now, th there's, there's a whole load of things here that um, could be shared. And th th there may be some things that you need to get in touch with people about and say, look, um, I'm going to share this with you fr from the passage. This is what God was saying to me. Um, the, the last verse, verse 16, talks about a mystery of godliness, a, a mystery of, of, of the good news of Jesus, the mystery of, of the church. And it's based around Jesus and it says that Jesus appeared in, in human form, in body, and was vindicated, was kind of proved to be true by the Holy Spirit. He was seen by angels and preached among the nation, was believed on in the world and was taken up to glory. Who needs to hear the message of Jesus, the story of gods of highest heaven coming and joining us in our mess so we can join God in his family? We can be welcomed into a loving relationship with the one who we can call Father because he created us. Who needs to hear that uh, this week? Who needs to, to know about the hope of, of good news based in Jesus Christ this week? Who needs to hear a, a fresh start that people can have with Jesus? I shared on Facebook last week that um, there are over 8,000 people that identify themselves as Christian in, in Charlton St. Peter. Maybe they feel apart from God's family at the moment because we don't see them when we gather as a big church. We may know who they are. So why don't we invite them back into family? Why don't we invite them back into being church, being part of God's household again? Maybe that could start with a Zoom church happening. So you're joining us online, but maybe you could start a little kind of conversation going on with someone else who's far from God at the moment or who has wandered away from God and you can invite them back in. That may be one way that you could share the good news about Jesus uh, this week. But it might be that you've tuned in this, this morning and watching online and that there's something as you looked at scripture, the Holy Spirit is basically doing something inside and just saying, look, I've got mess in my life and I want it sorted. Maybe, um, you're, you're full of fear this morning. Maybe you're full of um, distraction this morning and you've never actually heard and received for yourself um, the good news of Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer in a moment. and I, I want to invite you, um, if you recognise that you need a rescuer, that you need a, a hope bringer, that you need a a reason for life at the moment and you want that reason to be Jesus and you recognise that he is the only rescuer, he's the only one that can sort out our mess which the Bible calls sin, then do pray this prayer with me and then get in touch this week uh, either via the, the contact button on the website, on the front page there's a kind of um, can we pray for you button Press that, fill in the contact form and, and we'll get in touch with you and we can start, start a conversation. Um, if not, you could, um, you, you could email me at stephen.walkerwilliams at goldhill.org and we can email each other uh, this week and continue a conversation about following Jesus. I'm going to pray and uh, do join with me in, in praying now. Jesus, thank you that you... Um, Join us in our messy world, in our mess, so we can join you in God's family. Jesus, I pray that you'll help us to be church, to be family. You'll help us to know what it is uh, to obey you and, your, and follow your Holy Spirit's leading this week. And Jesus, I pray for those who have tuned in and are watching this, that 
um, are far from you and want to come close, who um, are in, in a situation that they need, they know that they need a rescuer and they need that rescuer to be you. And Jesus, as they pray th- this prayer, would you meet with them and uh, bring them into a good relationship with you? So if that is you, do pray these words out from wherever you are. Jesus, I recognise that my life is a mess. And I need a rescuer. I need someone to help me in it. Jesus, I recognise that I've wandered from you and from your way. And I want you to help me to come back to you or to come to you for the first time. Jesus, I recognise what you did for me on the cross. And I want to be uh, united in your family by your blood and in your love. So I come to you now, Jesus, not because... I'm good, but because you're good. And I want to be part of your family. Give me your Holy Spirit to kind of seal that family um, kind of identity in me. And help me to to know what it is to be um, part of your family. Amen. Well, uh Thank you to Stephen for, 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 for that message, for that time that he led us in. And uh, I encourage you, if there are things that you took from that, if there are things that you discovered as you looked into the scriptures yourself, um, or things that Stephen said that you want to make sure you hold on to, jot them down, make, make a note of them. Um, maybe you want to come back to it. Maybe you want to spend a bit more time in that passage. Um, I'll just remind you of a couple of things before we finish our time. Um, first is that there's a whole pack of resources that we put together uh, to go along with, uh, with with what we've done this morning for you to use by yourself or with others. So uh, so do do grab that. There's a link to that below, along with a link to uh, lots of resources that we're putting together and lots of different kinds of content that we'll be doing uh, throughout the week, as well as what we're doing uh, on Sundays. Um, and finally, there's that there's that opportunity to give as well. And just 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 a quick note, we've had a, had a message through to, to say that we've got those links the wrong way around. So currently, if you try to give, it will take you to the resources. And if you try and get resources, uh, it'll, it'll take you to give. That's not our way of trying to trick people into giving more. We just got the links uh, confused. Uh, that's been fixed now. But unless you refresh your page, the, the buttons will still take you to the to the wrong place. So maybe maybe there's something that you particularly want to, to hold on to that you want to message someone about. You can also use that comment box below uh, to, 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 to share ideas, to share thoughts. If there's anything that would help you to engage with God better uh, in what we're doing, uh, then, then, then do please let us know. And particularly if there's anything that we could be doing that will help you to engage with others who maybe are further from God, then please do, um, please do let us know that as well. We want to take the opportunities that this season presents as well as seeking to overcome the challenges. Maybe you actually were praying, joining in with Stephen as he prayed that prayer towards the end of that time that he led us in. Maybe you were praying, saying to God, actually, I want to be close from you, close to you. I've been far from you, but I want to be closer. If that's you, then please do email Stephen on the email address that he provided or drop a, drop a message in the box below and we can either, uh, we, we, we can be in touch and we can pick up that conversation. We'd love to do that. But for now, may you be blessed. May you uh, have a great rest of your day. May you continue to engage with God Uh, throughout the rest of today and throughout the rest of this week and may he show you so clearly where he wants you to go and the things that he wants to be in your life god bless you and bye-bye